So in this next part of the tutorial, I'm going to take a look at some of the other details of the female reproductive system. So we're going to build on what we looked at before, but fill in some of the gaps. So if you remember in the last tutorial, I mentioned that there were some ligaments which support the viscera and attach from some of the pelvic organs to the pelvic side walls. So in this first part, I'm going to talk about the fascia and the ligaments that are associated with the female reproductive tract. So in the pelvic cavity, you've got fascia, which lines the pelvic walls and it surrounds the, the pelvic cavity and it encapsulates the viscera and it forms sheaths around the vessels. And in various places, this fascia actually condenses to form ligaments. So it forms these ligaments which form slings around the viscera and which also provide attachment from the viscera to the walls of the pelvic cavity. So if I just rotate this cross section of the pelvis round, you can see we have the bladder anteriorly, then we've got the vagina, and then we've got the rectum and the anal cal canal posteriorly. So what I'd like to do is take a horizontal section through this level and we'll take a look at how the fascia forms ligaments around these viscera. So I've just switched over to this quick sketch that I've made and I'll just orientate you briefly. So posteriorly we've got the sacrum here and then anteriorly we've got the pubic symphysis and laterally we've got the pelvic side walls. So posteriorly we've got the rectum. Anterior to the rectum we've got the uterus and then at the front we've got the bladder. So the idea of this diagram is that it's a horizontal section of the pelvic viscera and I'm going to show you how the various ligaments attach to the uterus. So you've got ligaments which attach posteriorly to the sacrum, you've got ligaments which attach to the lateral side walls of the pelvic cavity and you've got ligaments which attach anteriorly to the front of the pelvic cavity. So the bands of fascia which thicken to extend from the uterus to the sacrum are called the uterosacral ligaments. So I've drawn these on here in blue. And then you've got the thickening of fascia which extends from the cervix to the lateral side walls of the pelvic cavity. So these thickenings of fascia are called the cardinal ligament, or the more descriptively named transverse cervical ligaments. And then extending anteriorly, you've got the pubocervical fascia which extends onto the pubis of the pelvic cavity. So this ligament extends forwards from the cardinal ligament onto the pubis on either side of the bladder. So those three ligaments together with the levator ani muscle which forms the bulk of the pelvic floor are responsible for supporting the cervix and the uterus and also the vaginal vault. So coming back to this model here, I'd like to take a look at the relationship of the broad ligament to the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and some of the other ligaments which are formed by its folds. So the broad ligament itself is this flat sheet of peritoneum which drapes over the viscera and it attaches from the side of the uterus to the pelvic side walls on either side. And within it, it contains the fallopian tube in its free superior edge, which you can see here. It also attaches to the ovary via its posterior aspect, which is known as the mesovarium. It contains the round ligament, the ovarian ligament. It also transmits the uterine vessels and various branches of the ovarian vessels and it also carries lymphatics and nerve fibers. And if I rotate the model around what you'll be able to see is that deep to this ligament you've got the ureters coming underneath it to pass into the bladder. Above the ureters at this point, you've got the uterine arteries being carried in the broad ligament. So a, a way to remember this relationship is the mnemonic 
water under the bridge. So the water carried within the ureter refers to the water that's under the bridge. So the bridge is the uterine artery. So a ligament I mentioned just now was the round ligament. So this ligament you can see here covered by the peritoneum coming off the uterus. So coming laterally off the uterus you've got the round ligament which passes in this underneath this anterior aspect of the broad ligament and it actually passes through the deep inguinal ring to enter the inguinal canal. It then runs along the entire length of the inguinal canal just like the spermatic cord in males and it ends up in the labium magus in the perineum. So that's the round ligament of the uterus. So now moving on to the ovaries. So I mentioned before that the ovaries are actually attached to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament by something called the mesoverium, which is essentially a fold of the broad ligament, which suspends the ovaries in the intraperitoneal space. So the ovaries actually have two attachments, or two ligaments. So one ligament attaches to the superior pole of the ovary, and the other attaches to the inferior pole. So if I just rotate it slightly, you can see that there's a fold of peritoneum in the broad ligament, on the lateral side of the broad ligament. So this fold of peritoneum attaches to the superior pole of the ovary and it's called the infundibulopelvic ligament or also the suspensory ligament of the ovary. So this fold of peritoneum contains the ovarian vessels and the lymphatics which pass from the side wall of the pelvis and enter into the superior pole of the ovary. And then if I just rotate the model so we can look from a superior view, you can see that there's an attachment on the inferior pole of the ovary which connects the ovary to the uterus. And this is called the ovarian ligament. And this ligament is a fibromuscular band of tissue which passes to the cornu of the uterus. And upon attachment to the uterus, this ligament actually continues round anteriorly and laterally as the round ligament which I just showed you. So I've just outlined this in red. So now you should have a good idea of the organisation of the ligaments which are involved in the reproductive system.